Hello everybody, welcome to English on Thursday the 21st of January with me, Mrs Craven. Hope you're all well, taking care, looking after yourselves. Our walk today, so what we are learning to do is to write questions and use appropriate punctuation. To be successful today, um, we want to see, children, if you can write a question and use the appropriate punctuation at the end of your question. Now, we have got a picture of our character, um, the robot here, and um, the bluebird. And I'd like you to have a little think about what we know about them already and um, have a little chat with your grown up if you're at home and at school we'll have a chat together. So what have we learned so far about the robot and the bluebird? So if you would like to have um, a minute or two to have a chat, you can pause the video here. Now remember what we are learning to do today is to know what a question is, how to ask a question and to use the right punctuation at the end of our question. So what is a question? How do we show we are writing a question and what punctuation do we use? Do you know? We have learnt this before so we can use some of our prior learning, see what you can remember. So what is a question? How do we show we are writing a question and what punctuation do we use? So how do we know it's not a sentence, a statement? Well, I bet you know. A question is something that helps us to find out information. A question always needs an answer. And as you can see on my screen, a question, if you're writing one, always needs a question mark at the end. And you can see the big black question mark on my um, PowerPoint here. Now, there are some words on my screen, nice bright colourful words. And these are really good question words to use at the start of a question. The purple one says why, the orange one says when, the green one says which, the pink one says who, the blue one says where and the yellow one says how. They're all really great question words to use at the beginning of a question and remember you know you're asking a question if someone can give you an answer. Now, we invite you to practice in a minute with your grown up at home or if you're at school, we'll practice together and with our friends uh, using some of those question words to ask a question. And remember, you'll know you've asked a question because the person you're asking it to should need to give you an answer. I'll give you an example. So, where are you? Mrs Craven and I'd answer that and I'd say I am in the school library children so I asked a question and I needed to give an answer um let me see which other question word could I ask oh um we could say um why are you wearing a scarf Mrs Craven and I could say Oh, because I'm feeling very cold today. So I had to give an answer. So practice using some of those question words to ask a question to your grown up if you're at home. And maybe your grown up could use those words to ask you a question and make sure that your questions are able to have answers. Okay, off you go, have a try. Now, our activity today, we'd like you to write a question or questions to ask either the bluebird or the robot. 
Now, we want to make sure that we know who your question is being asked to. We want to know whether your question is for the robot or the bluebird, um, depending on um, what your question is about. So, for example, if I said, um, why are your feathers blue? Who would that question be for boys and girls? Would that be for the bluebird? Or would that be for the robot? How do you know? Have a little think. Why are your feathers blue? Hmm, I think you've got it. That's right, it's for the bluebird because only the bluebird has blue feathers, not the robot. Let's try another one. Hmm, let's see. Um, why has your metal frozen? Hmm, who would that question be for? Would that be a robot question or would that be a question for the bluebird? Why has your metal frozen? Have a little think, have a little chat. Who would that be a question for? That's right, it's for the robot because he is metal and he looks frozen. The bluebird is not made from metal and he has not frozen. So that is a robot question. We'll do two more. Where have you flown from? Hmm. Where have you flown from? Who would that be a question for? Would that be a question for the bluebird or would that be a question for the robot? And how do you know? Hmm. Some thinking time. You've got it, that's right. It's a question for the bluebird because the bluebird can fly, the robot cannot fly. Let's do one more. Why is there a hole in your chest? Why is there a hole in your chest? Now children, who would that be a question for? Is that a question for the bluebird or a question for the robot? Mm, think carefully. I think you're getting the hang of this. That's right. It would be a question for the robot because he is the only character on that page that has a hole in his chest. The bluebird doesn't have a hole in her chest. It is the robot. So what I would like you to do is to write a question for the bluebird, that would only be a bluebird question, and questions for the robot, that would only be robot questions, that wouldn't be suitable for the bluebird, that only the robot could answer, okay? And to help you write your questions, I want you to look at those special question words again at the top of my slide, the why, the when, the which, the how, the where, the who, maybe with your grown-up you can try and use one of those words or even um, a, two different words in those questions. You might be able to use a why question to ask one of the characters or a where question. You might say um, to, you might say, where have you flown from? And that would be a good question to write for the bluebird. You might say, how long have you been sitting in the snow? And that would be a good question for the robot. Why is your heart missing? That would be a good question for the robot as well. So think of your own. Try and think. Um, if you're going to fly high, maybe see if you can think of three different questions for the bluebird and write them down and three different questions for um, the robot. Remember to use a question mark at the end, 
the black question mark. That's how we. Um, that's how they're formed. Remember, we do not need a full stop and a question mark when we're writing questions. We just need a question mark. And if you think three is a bit too much of a challenge, maybe you could just write one question for the bluebird and one question for the robot. So make sure it's only a question that the bluebird would be able to answer and a question that only the robot would be able to answer. And remember, um, children and parents, if um, you need some extra support, then it's absolutely fine for uh, maybe the grown up can write the questions and then you could get um, the children to practice just putting the question mark at the end and practice um, drawing on the question mark themselves. And that's absolutely fine as well. So let's move on to our next slide. Your challenge, your fly high. Um, can you read your question out loud to someone? And then maybe they could pretend to be the character and answer your question as though they were the character, the robot or the bluebird. Maybe you could swap and your grown-up could read your question and you could try and answer it as either the robot or the bluebird. Now, when you read your question, can you tell who the question's for? Can you tell if it's been written for the bluebird to answer or the robot to answer? If you can, then well done. And have you used some of the different question words that are on my screen? Did you remember to put a question mark at the bottom? If you've done any of those things, then well done. You've been really successful today and I'm very proud of you. We'll find out some more of our English challenges tomorrow and we'll see what happens to the robot and the bluebird then. Bye bye, take care.